Hello, Reef DVMs here. As you know, we've been dealing with a phosphate problem in our tanks, and we're finally starting to win, and people are like, geez, it's great, it's easy for you to win. You've got yourself, you know, a phosphate reactor and a calcium reactor and so forth, and pfft, shucks. I tell people you could do this with just bags and a sump, too, and they're like, no way. So here I am, I'm going to do my 55-gallon tank today. I've got some Fluval Media bags. I got some uh, Fosgard here from Seachem, and I grabbed some Cascade Carbon, real easy stuff to buy in a store. Real piece of cake here to do, folks. Let me just show you how you can take a simple tank, like a 55-gallon tank, take a media bag like we're doing here, fill it up with some Fosgard, buy some fairly inexpensive carbon that you can find in a media bag already at a store, put it in your sump, and have great results. You don't always have to do like we do and have all these media reactors and stuff to make it work. So for a 55-gallon tank, I like about 12 um, scoops, and these scoops are about a third of a cup, give or take. So I'm running three to four cups, and I'm going to leave this in for about six months um, in this um, sump. And in about six months, I'll start to see the phosphate rise, and then I'll change it out. The carbon bag I'll probably only leave for about two to three months and then I'll change that out. So again, this is just to show you that it's pretty easy to do. If you've got a sump and you don't want to buy a Fosban and Fosban reactor or a Two Little Fishes reactor to run your GFO in, or you don't want to put Fosgard in a bulk reef supply reactor system, or you don't want to be changing cartridges all the time of carbon, all you've basically got to do is like this, fill some media bags or buy it in a pre-made media bag and stick it in the sump in a high flow area where the water has to go through it and you'll pretty much accomplish the same thing. It might take you a little longer because you don't get quite the water flow through it like you can a reactor. You may not be able to adjust it quite as much, um, but it still will work. Um, in this situation, by the way, the reason I use the Fluval media bags come with these nice little clips to, to shut them. Of course, you know, rubber band or a electrical tie or a zip tie would all work too. So basically once I get this together I've got my bag of Foss Guard and I've got my bag of um, carbon there and we'll head over to the sink and get them rinsed off so we can use them. What I always find to, to, to work with this stuff is you know get it rinsed really well but remember the water I'm rinsing it with since um, it may have impurities because it comes from a well I'm going to make sure that I let these bags, after I rinse them, sit for about 15-20 minutes on a real good towel so that all the excess of water can get out of them. Look how black that is. Isn't that amazing how much black comes out of this? Carbon's always like that. You should always rinse this, otherwise it just ends up on your sand bed, folks. You don't really want that black uh, carbon dust on your sand bed. It just detracts from the whole tank. But again, you rinse the carbon for a few minutes. And technically, you don't have to rinse Fosgard, but I really like to because I find there's still a little bit of a white film that comes off it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm just going to let them dry out on a towel for about 15-20 minutes. And then I'm going to take them and put them in the sump in a high flow location. And for the 55-gallon tank, this is all we do. Um, again, we've got a protein skimmer on that system. But we don't do anything beyond that other than um, calcium addition. So here's the sump. Um, as you can see there, it's got um, a top piece that goes into just a blue filter media there. That's just to catch any big junk. Um, and then um, I've got an egg crate there. And I just basically, once every six months, lay the new Fosgard in there in the filter media bag. And again, about every two to three months, I'll change out that little carbon bag. And then I put the, the filter media back on top. That plastic tray's got hundreds of holes underneath it. And then I'll turn the system on, and the water will come down from the tank, hit that blue filter media, and catch all the large stuff, and then pour over the top of the Fosgard and the carbon. Fosgard will pick up the phosphate and the phosphorus out of the water. Carbon will help pick up other inorganic and organic products that we want, like toxins, out of the water. And lo and behold, Everything hopefully will work great on this 55 gallon. So here I am. We're going to turn it on and get everything running. In a second here, you'll start to see the water come in once everything gets going. Here we go. It's starting to come, starting to trickle. 
once it actually gets enough power it actually rains pretty good and it'll help fill the sump up to the level of these bags but this is how easy it is folks you don't have to go through all the expense of all the reactors and stuff you can also use um, in these bags chemi pure elite would work um, chemi pure for a carbon source would work uh, there there's a whole plethora of products out there i'm not really saying you have to use one over another i personally in the 55 gallon tank like these two now I do a different setup in my 75 gallon tank, but on the 55 gallon, this works really nice for me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, folks. hope this helps explain what I do to keep my phosphorus and phosphate down in my 55 gallon. Again, I know I've been working with my 75, which has had a phosphate problem, and I run reactors and other things in there, but this is how we do it. I appreciate you watching. Hopefully, you guys have a good day. Please click or like. Um, our video that would be great if you can subscribe to our channel it'll certainly help us continue to make more videos like this thank you for watching